to come to prayer with me this morning. Great God of creation and all glory, we thank you for this day and having us called into this sacred space. Enable us, God, to be that image of God that lives and breathes within us each and every day. But be with us through that diversity and through those in our lives as we connect the dots with one another this morning. As we make those dots a single line becoming one. So now I pray that you touch my lips of clay and mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And that the words that come from my mouth and the meditations that come from each and every one of our hearts may they ever be acceptable to you in the name of Jesus the Christ in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to start out this morning by enhancing the scripture we heard by adding another scripture that um, I didn't want to have to do two readings this morning, but you're kind of getting two, a two for the price of one. But I want to read a passage out of 1 Corinthians um, that will help enhance the scripture that we heard out of John's Gospel this morning. So here are these words. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same God. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To the one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of a of knowledge according to that same scripture, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. So this morning, we conclude the series that we've had all month, our Pride Month series, um, that we've been looking at the last several weeks. And, you know, we've looked at how we can pay it forward. We've looked at who those neighbors should be in our lives. And while taking that, using those tools and living the best possible, the best possible diverse life we can each and every day. And this morning I want to start by asking us to rethink for ourselves and what it means to be church. But also, what does it mean for us to be a community that is 47 years young? Now keep in mind, we first came to Milwaukee in 1971. So it's 47 years in the community. This congregation happens to be celebrating 31 years. So look at it in a twofold, 47 years, but also where we've been in 31 years. And what does it mean for us to be a church that continues to seek out that rebel relevance in the world? What does it mean for us to be the people who gather on the inside, but must have impact on the outside? You know, we are the people who are connected with each other. We are people that are deeply loved. And we are people who want to love one another as God has loved us. How do we allow this gospel of good news to make a difference in our lives so that not just something that we see on a Sunday morning right here at Milwaukee MCC, but something that has that impact beyond Sunday worship. How do we dwell into that deeply? How do, let me start that. Let me say that again. How do we delve more deeply into the covenants that we hold with one another? And how do we enable those sacred words that come from each and every one of our lives that doesn't just transform us, but transforms those out into the world? How do we connect? How do we serve? How do we invite? And ultimately, how do we celebrate? It is deeply embedded in the life of Jesus and how we must connect with one another. And in some of Paul's scriptures that we just heard, we hear the Apostle Paul, who we assume wrote the early church back in Corinth, and in his letter he implores the people to find that 
oneness with one another. Now, in order to understand why Paul wrote these world, words, we probably need to understand a little bit about the first, the, the first letter that the church of Corinth received. The Corinth church, the Corinth people were in a disarray. They were starting to learn what it meant to be followers of Jesus. They were beginning to understand what it meant to be the people of justice and to be the people of equality. That's something that we do each and every week here at MCC. And in their learning experience, they sort of had to grow up, put on the big boy pants and go out into the world and be an adult. They had to have that adulting relationship with one another, something that they had not had before. And as part of this growing up, and as part of this understanding, and a part of his evolution as people and followers of Jesus, Paul implores upon them to remember that no matter where they were on their journey, no matter what gift they might have had, that the gifts are the same for the spirit that unites each and every one of us. It was the gift of the holy. It wasn't just something that had natural attrition. It was something that was given to them that they might become one in one another. It was also that they might be one to understand that there was no hierarchy of these gifts of Jesus that were given and at the same time there was no hierarchy of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But rather that the Holy knew that all of these gifts were needed to form this impact and to make a difference in the lives of the people. So we hear the Apostle Paul describe in the list of gifts, and yet it's probably not a complete or full list, that no matter what <laughs> gift we have been given, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And that we should appreciate and indeed celebrate the giftedness of one another. So it seems that Paul lived in a world very similar to us, a world where we still have hierarchy and the hierarchy of gifts, and a world where we still believe that some are gifted more than some of us. I would hope that we don't do that, but you know, our world still is in that a little bit of that disarray. But rather than understanding that we are in this together, that we need one another that we need all of us in order to move forward in that great commission of Jesus that we love one another as Jesus has loved each of us. So these gifts of the holy that Paul describes in this early letter, letter to Corinth is a reminder to the people. And I believe that we are reminded that we need to remain grounded in our own sacredness, in our own giftedness, and remain grounded in who we are and who God created us to be in order to be that body of Christ. So many gifts, one spirit, one spirit that gives to each and every one of us to, according to God's desire to live that experience that the world gives us each and every day. See, it seems like God has this understanding of humanity. This is the same example that in Christ is exemplified in John's writing that we heard this morning where Jesus is praying. Jesus continues in his prayer and is praying to God in heaven and saying, there is a spirit within me. There is a God within me, says Jesus, and that I want everyone else to receive it. In order to receive you need to gather in these small groups, these small groups of disciples as the twelve did back when Jesus brought those disciples together. And in order for that to happen, it must be where we're connected with one another and that we are deeply involved with each other and that we're in deeply embedded in what God is doing in each other's lives that it might be shared beyond one another. 
Jesus was connected with in, enabling folks like you and I to get that message. To understand this deep sense of love, a deep sense of appreciation, and this overwhelming sense that God's grace and goodness lives in those Gospels through the disciples and encourages us today. It encourages us encourages us today, that's like getting syllables to that word, uh, to find this depth to live, this depth of meaning, to get the passion and the depth of understanding who Jesus really is, or excuse me, who God really is within our life. In that connectedness, we connect with one another, having that connectedness in which we have that deep place within our hearts. And in order to do that, it's that deep place for our needs, that deep place when we grieve, where we, where we are in our lives, and when we suffer a loss, I would kind of not really put suffering Jeff as a loss, but I kind of do because he's been with us for 23 years. But, you know, it's a loss for us. I mean, even though he's not leaving the conversation, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. For 23 years, we've had someone who has been faithful and has been here 99.9 .9 of every Sunday of those 23 years being dedicated to this church. And when we do that, we have to have that opportunity, that sense of that grief, that sense of celebration, and to know where to go. Folks, Milwaukee MCC is the place where we go. It's the place where we find that solace. It's that place where we find community. It's that place where we find connection. And it's the place where we must find a connection. It's a place that we go. I will be the first to admit that there are times in my life that I need to go someplace and no matter what I might be doing, and you know, as a preacher, I know that I have to be here on Sunday mornings. Believe me, there are many Sunday mornings I wake up and it's like, oh, okay. It'd be nice to sleep in on a Sunday morning, but you know, it's part of, I know I need to be here. And with all that that is going on in the days in the days on in my life, I need to be with you on Sunday morning. Not just because it's my job, it's because you are part of me. You are that beloved in me. You are that beloved in Christ. And sometimes it takes a little lesson to learn those things, but it helps us this morning that when we hear the scripture and we hear what words are out there to know how loved we are and how deeply love is spread. So to understand that in sometimes in these times, especially in a congregation this size, even though we're a small congregation, we're mighty. But sometimes it's difficult to connect with one another. And even sometimes it's just easy to slip in as it is to slip out. But in order to find our place and to find our faith and to find our place at the table, it is incumbent on each and every one of us to find those places of connection. And if it's just those, if it's just those sitting next to you on Sunday morning, take advantage of those connections that God allows us to find when we're together. I pray that you will find a way in which we might connect deeply and more deeper in prayer with one another. With persons or persons or someone with you may not even know, but you'll find a connection. But that we find that hope within one another. But in those connections that we want to be able to build one another up rather than pull somebody down. We build those connections to enhance one another. 
rather than turn them away. Understand that when we connect deeply with one another, it's a hand in hand with one another. It's those deep connections with one another that we have that presence within us, but nonetheless have that presence of God back and forth. Just as those people in ancient time did, we discover that the different gifts are, are under all one spirit. That we understand that God works so uniquely in each and every one of us, but nonetheless, God is in each and every one of us. And while at the same time, knowing that God works so differently through each of us, that when we bring it together, it becomes still the one. <clears throat> so what this all amounts to is that it's about each and every one of us. It's how we make an impact on the world. It's how each and every one of us are reminding that we must connect and reconnect with one another. If you haven't connected with somebody in a while, maybe it's time to think about connecting. But we must connect in order to deeply connect, that we must respect and love one another as Jesus tells us, and to love one another as Jesus has loved each of us. <coughs> If we are a part of this congregation or even a part of this community, I want people to know that this is a place where God's love is made genuinely true and real each and every day. Not just on Sunday mornings, but each and every day of our lives that we can turn to and we can reach out to both the joys in our lives and even the sorrows in our lives. Folks, that's what makes church church. Any one of us can show up on a Sunday morning and kind of sneak out at the end, trying not to see the pastor see you sneak out, you know, kind of sneak in, sit in the back, and then kind of slip out as church is over after we sing the closing song. I, I see those people. I, I, my, my, my vision is kind of 360 sometimes. But, um, but at the same time, we are called more just to do that. We are called to uh, have that depth of friendship, yeah. that depth of relationship with one another that makes the difference in our lives. Now I have to tell you that in the two years that I've lived in Milwaukee, it's been that long already, <laughs> uh, I've heard all sorts of gossip. I've heard all sorts of gossip right here in this congregation. Yeah, <laughs> heaven forbid. But I've also heard gossip about me. More so in the early days when I got here because there was this rip rap going on. But I gotta tell you, if any of it was half true, I'd be living a glorious life. And maybe a few other things too, you know. But I'd be living this glorious life probably of sin and debauchery. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, what can I say? But it's surprising how many of us in our world and our community just want to tear people down and want to set up leaders for failure. But that's not who we are. And I'm going to tell you that it's not the ministry that Jesus had either. It's not that what we were taught. We were taught to love one another and to know what we need from one another and to strive and perhaps do it more so than ever. I think many times you've heard me, whether you like the person or not, still be friendly to them. Treat them as you would want to be treated by somebody else. I'll make a deal with you. If you have a question, and I've said this on more than one occasion, and the board also knows that I have an open door policy. You know, it doesn't mean just because I mean I'm not here. I mean open door policy means you can get a hold of me. You know. And you think that there's gossip going on, whether it's about me or you or somebody else or whatever, or you have a question, come to me. I'm not afraid to tell you the truth. I'm not afraid to tell you as it is, as some, some of you know. It may not be the answer you want to hear, but 
I will tell you like it is. And I've made that commitment and promise since I've been here since day one. I mean, the board can probably tell you, or those who have been on the board, that I am pretty much on the surface. I don't hide anything under the mat. You know, it's pretty much all out there. It's pretty transparent. And that was something that I made clear when I came two years ago, that we weren't going to hide anything under the carpet. We are a transparent congregation, and that what happens is transparent because it's all a part of us. There are a lot of things that are going to be happening in the next month. Lots of things. And it's time for us to be that transparent congregation, to be engaged in those things within this congregation, to show the strength and to show that love that we have with one another. I want us to be embedded in that loving of Christ this day and every day. I'll pray for you if you pray for me. I'll love you if you love me. Know that we are the people whom the world we look at here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church and say, these are the people who are walking the walk and talking the talk. These are the people who are the example of grace and truth and wisdom and so on and so forth because we are committed to be connected. Connecting those dots with one another Remember as kids, those little, those little coloring books that had all the little dots and the little numbers, and you would take the crayon and just go from one to the other, connecting the dots to make the picture? That's what we need to do. We're those dots. And as we connect those dots and complete the picture, it becomes one, and we become the one of the whole. So this morning, I lift those people up in our lives as a model and what it deeply means to connect with people as the church and to deeply connect with each and every one of us. And I don't want you to leave this place this morning without telling somebody <coughs> about them. Because if there is anything at all that teaches us that we won't want to bring, that we don't want to know what brings tomorrow, don't wait until tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow brings. May we lift up to the fullest extent and possible loving one another, not hating one another, but being those people who are built, willing to be vulnerable to, enough to be one another, to know that we need one another to survive each and every day in this life. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, with with me, we're all a part of God's body, it is God's will that
May God hear God's people this day. May God bless you each and every day in the Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen. 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 Amen.